Hi there, my name is Rob Frank. I'm an assistant professor of English at Hartford Community College, and this is a brief tutorial on how to use EasyBib to create a Works Cited page or a reference page. Uh, first of all, this is a forum post. Uh, particularly, I, this is a student requested example. This particular post is what we're going to try to cite by Sean MCL. So the first thing we can do is take the actual HTTP address, cut that, and then go over to a website called EasyBib, and you can type it in. You can even spell it incorrectly into Google and pull right up. So we can paste in the HTTP address, and what it will do is pull up some of the information for us. However, um, we're now going to have to go back through everything to make sure that it is correct. So content published originally on a website yes article title our article title is actually a little bit different if we go back over to the original page uh, you can't see it it's, it's actually at the very very top of the screen in the browser window it's called uh, digital digital forensics forums general discussion services needed data recovery firms and data recovery firms uh, I believe is the uh, topic post. So yes, here it is. So that would be the specific information needed to find this particular page. Um, so let's go to EasyBib. And here, I actually have it auto-filled. So I don't have to retype all this. It's digital forensics, forums, general discussion, services needed, data recovery firms. Now for the author, I do suggest putting in the username here. This is also where you would put the information if it were a corporation. For example, if it were the uh, US uh, Food and Drug Administration, that would go in here. And then this way, it would appear on the leftmost part of the citation, the very first part of the citation, which is important because that's uh, essentially, I mean, the, the citations go in alphabetical order. So um, it's, it's very important that you have the, the right author um, or, or contributor for that part. So here we had a username. Now, if more specific information were included, we could put that in as well. So, for example, I know one of the posts down later on the page here actually has a name. But all we have to work with is Sean MCL. Put that in. Now, for website title, the website title is actually a little bit different from what has been autofilled because here you can see the, the website title is Forensic Focus. And if we go down to the bottom, again, it's copyright Forensic Focus. So back over to okay. and Forensic Focus. The publisher sponsor is the same as the website title and points out here that it's often the same. Oops. We jump to the next page. Um, I'm afraid to mess with this again because this actually happened to me last time as well. And when I hit the back button at this point, it had erased what I had done. But it looks correct. Let me go here. It is edit citation. And, oh, here we go. Nice. Forensic focus. Well, that's good. And then that will show you what to do if you accidentally skip ahead. And then here, electronically published. This is important information as well. And we can see that the first post or the post that we're trying to cite was on October 22nd, 2008. Okay, 
this over one last time. Okay, looks good. And there you have it. Okay, good. It should be repeated. Now for the uh, HTML or HTTP address here, I recommend leaving it in. Um, I, I think that it, it does depend on the instructor's preference. I think it's easier to include it and then have the instructor ask you to not include it than vice versa. Um, and so I do recommend leaving it in there. Uh, personally, I do not require it because MLA 7 does not require it. Um, and you can also change over to APA here as well. Uh, when you would cite this in the paper itself, um, it would be interesting because the technical citation would be to put Sean MCL in parentheses at the end of the sentence. But sometimes the technical citation for in-text citations um, doesn't capture what you're trying to what you're trying to do. I mean, in terms of of uh, talking about where the information came from. So in a case like this, I would suggest putting it in the actual sentence itself. So for example, I would say, um, according to a a post by a user named Sean MCL in the forensic focus. Uh, forums and then I would continue with the information from there rather than just kind of giving some information and then adding at the end a citation of just Sean MCL which doesn't really explain where it came from even though it may be technically correct so I, I do think that that is definitely worth noting um, you know same kind of thing if it were like the US Food and Drug Administration you know, you, you would spell it all out here. You would also spell it all out in your paper as well for the first time you use it, but then put the acronym in parentheses afterward. So you could put in parentheses afterward FDA, and then you could refer to it uh, throughout as FDA. Um, you may want to include this, uh, this acronym in your works cited page as well in parentheses, but I would spell it out entirely at first and write in uh, you know, the, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, whatever the, the technical, uh, fully spelled out way is to do it. That's how I would have it in your Works Cited page with, with the uh, parentheses afterward with the acronym. That way, again, it's, it's also that the, the reader can kind of figure out um, looking at the Works Cited page based on alphabetical order which source is where. So uh, that's pretty much it for internet sources for your works cited or reference page. For the EBSCO sources, um, you can actually just pull up the citation page for EBSCO, and I have an example one here. Uh, I use the, the dangers of running example in another video, so I figured why not continue with that here. And now they actually offer it, so it's just over on the right here. They have this part that says cite, and if you click on that, it will come up for any kind of format, APA, MLA, and others. And you may have to do some minor changes. Uh, for one, I know that uh, it's sometimes in all caps, and you'd have to change that. Also, the indentation is off here. Um, you know, you can see the indentation of the EasyBib. This is the way that it should look. So also, you know, you would have to put everything in alphabetical order in the end so the, the more surface uh, organization and formatting can actually come at the very end of the creation of the Works Cited page. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.